Got a uh, Kodak Retina 3 small C camera here for repair. This one unfortunately is one of life's uh, casualties. If you look at the base plate, I'll zoom in a bit. You'll see that the leatherette is exceptionally ugly. It's actually bubbled up and floating at this point. It looks like someone's painted it. It's got a very cracked look to the surface. I've got no idea what's going on there. Of course the uh, leatherette patch from the advanced lever is already missing. Somebody's painted the body edges. Now you'll know that the retina 3 small c uh, that would have had polished alloy body edges. The later ones had chrome trims top and bottom. This is an earlier one. So the base of the camera is not looking very promising. The back of the camera, well the leatherette's not showing any great Zeiss bumps or anything. It's got a patchy look to it, like it's uh, got dull patches to it. Um, I'm not sure what's gone on there. It could just be someone's touched it with solvent on their hands. That'll certainly take the finish off it. It could be that somebody's applied something to this in the way of a finish and that's made it look patchy. I don't know. The top cover. The top cover doesn't look too bad. The top part of it's quite good. The front. The front of the top cover is pushed in at this point. There's a faint scuff mark there. And the glass, the cover glass for the viewfinder lens and the rangefinder lens. Well, the viewfinder lens at least is present. I can just see the lo a loose end of a piece of glass in here. So I'm hoping the whole piece of glass is still there and it's not just a fragment of it. The door, the front door. Now you can probably see here that this doesn't exactly fit back to the body. It's not clipping closed. It's refusing to go back that far. So I don't know what's going on there exactly. If I extend the front of the camera, the arm here has got a bend in it right about there, which you probably can't really see. But there's a bend in the arm there. That arm certainly buckled up. The other one's not much better. The light meter. The light meter goes. That works. And the follower needle, that even works fairly well too. What happens, or oh, looking at the front of the camera, I'm looking at the lens now. You can probably see that even on the camera there now. That's just a cloudy mess. Um, that's on inner surfaces. I don't know which inner surfaces yet. Probably the one, this one here, the innermost one. Possibly one of the intermediate surfaces. Someone's been into the shutter because it's missing the little lock screw that's used to hold that retaining ring in place. So the shutter's going to be a bit of a mystery. Oh yeah, that lens doesn't want to clip into place. Something's been damaged there. Uh, that'll take some investigation. What else? Does the diaphragm move if I move the aperture lever? It does, but it's very stiff. But it certainly does moving. The shutter blades look fairly oily. What happens when we move the film advance? Well, it just sticks at the end of the stroke. And I can see the gear here inside that case that drives the rack on the shutter. I can see that, that you won't be able to see that, but I can see that. That's not even twitching when I move the advance lever. So that tells me that the cocking rack is either not present, or it's completely stripped, or the gears off the top of the film advance. One of those things. It's certainly not a good sign. So, I'll start stripping this monstrosity down. Um, see if I can make a good going camera out of it for the owner. I won't give you blow by blow but as I find interesting things out I'll start the video back up. 
Well that didn't take long, I've just taken the film advance, the film rewind knob off and I noticed that the camera is missing the collar that sits on top of that post. So that's not looking very promising. Well, I lifted the top off. The glass is certainly there. Looks like the other piece of glass is there and complete, so at least that's promising. That'll have to be stripped and cleaned anyway, so uh, no great harm done there. There are three screws that hold the top of the, the top cover onto one of these cameras. And one of the screws is missing. One of the screws is correct. The other screw is not. That's come from the base plate of the camera, I would think. So that's certainly not the chrome plated screw that should have been there. So that's not looking too good. What else can I see? Oh, the cover glass from the top of the exposure meter is broken and loose. Its missing piece, here's the missing piece, or at least the major part of it. I can see there is a cocking rack present, but I don't know much more than that. Okay, we're getting deeper into it now. The screw at this point, someone's put a crosshead screw in there. Kodak never used those, so that's a foreigner. This is starting to look like worse than a failed repair attempt. It's starting to look like someone's leftovers. I'll undo this screw and we'll lift off the meter. At least that screw looks like an authentic Kodak part. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Well those rack teeth look basically they're mutilated, they're undernourished and they're not biting anything. It's damaged in multiple places um, so that certainly didn't happen with one event. Uh, another crosshead screw here so this was certainly assembled out of bits and pieces of something. Let's see if I can get that loose. So that's a foreigner. I'll lift off the rangefinder. The rangefinder actually worked. It's very hazy, but it did work. And it's even held in place by the correct screws. I'll have a quick look at this. Oh, it's very filthy. Wonder you can see through that. Oh, shutter release button. Film release button. Return spring for the film release button. The shutter release shaft, I'll lift that out. On this camera, it's a two-piece. It's got a little collar on it. You be careful not to lose that collar if it's present. Just lift this screw off. Oh, that's loose. That means that this post is not tight. No, it's loose. Somebody didn't have the tool for that and didn't bother to tighten it. Just lift that rack off. Oh, it's jammed in. I'm looking at that. Yeah, that's finished. That's had its day. What else can we say from the top plate? Let's have a look at this film advanced stuff here. That, the gear on the top of the film advanced doesn't look exceptionally bad. It's sitting at a funny position there. Um, with the arm against the body, I'd normally expect that to be more straight forward and back than that. So there may be something odd going on with that film advance. We'll find out in due course. Those pieces all look 
relatively normal. Take the gear off. At least that screw is tight. And this one, this screw is the guide post for the shutter cocking rack. And if it's loose, it doesn't support the rack, and the rack is not held in firm contact with the teeth on that gear. Right, so far so good. Let's see what we can find. I'll remove the strap lug at this end of the camera. The rewind assembly complete. I'll take the screw and spring from the top of this lock lever, the shaft of the lock lever. I'll remove the circlip and spring from the top of the end of film lock and now I'll start work stripping the base of the camera three screws on the advance lever they're loose Wow, somebody had that tensioned up a little bit too severely. Two small screws hold the back catch release cover in place. And it's spring. You can see that leather edge is just falling off there. Oh, okay. All right. There's an entire cover missing under here. The cover plate's not even present. There should be a cover on here. That cover would have been held in place with three screws. One of those screws would have been almost certainly the stray that I saw at the top of the camera. Now this leatherette Yeah, honestly, that's the ugliest piece of leatherette I've seen in a long time. I'm going to try and see if I can tell what's going on with all this crap. If that's paint on the top, I can possibly improve the look of this if I remove all that rubbish. And uh, I can see that it's a piece missing here and it's cracked across at this point. I think it's been stuck down with some inappropriate adhesive that would have melted the plastic in the leatherette and then um, you just got to spudge it around with your fingers and just leave huge fingerprints in the molten plastic until it looks exceptionally ugly and I think that's what someone has done. So it might be a bit of a struggle getting that leatherette off, I'm not even sure it's worth the fight. I might, I'll have a go at it. Um, it's got to come off regardless. Well I'm a bit further into it now. The leatherette from the base of the camera wouldn't come off in one piece. There was no danger. This is the biggest piece I have from that leatherette. It looks to me like it was glued in with araldite. There was absolutely no danger of getting that leatherette off in large pieces at all. In fact the only reason this large piece came out as it did was because the cover plate that normally it would have been glued to wasn't even present. So so much for saving the leatherette. The base of the camera I stripped the leatherette off there I'll have to scrape off all the remaining glue and rubbish. I've lifted out the other mechanical components from the body. All I'm left with at the moment is the focus mechanism to re remove. The arms on here are quite badly bent as I suspected. They'll probably straighten up. The film advance, somebody had been playing with that. It was tensioned up far too far. The spring's a little bit distorted. Um, I don't know whether that'll be 
useful. I uh, have to wait and see on that one. Um, the focus, the position of the focus. Now I noticed that the, it didn't want to rack out all the way forward. Well, the reason it doesn't want to rack out all the way forward is it's incorrectly positioned. So someone has had this apart and they've lost their setting and so it's anyone's guess where that helical once used to be and there's no point in me making alignment marks on it because it will not be going back in the same position. So someone has been very deep into this camera and at every turn they've buggered things up. Yeah, that, that's actually bent. This is actually bent. Um, so I have to straighten that up anyway. That'll be a, a side effect of this business here with the with the focus. See, normally I would expect it to be around about there, but of course this whole thing is in the wrong position relative to that. So it may well be, there is an alignment mark across there, but one of the alignment marks is wrong, obviously, that can't go there. That could never have been infinity. So there'll be a bit of uh, a lot of resetting to be done. I'll take the cover off here. That uh, gear from the transfer shaft. Throw those pieces and go into the cleaner. That can be cleaned by hand. And what have I got left now? Still plenty more to come apart. The black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Those screw heads are mutilated looking. Someone's been at them. for countersunk head or flat head screws as they're sometimes referred to hold the retainer ring in place the four bright screws here which are nickel plated and they are also quite damaged hold this focus assembly to the front standard. That screw's got an unpleasant sort of a feel to it, like the uh, thread was not... Uh, was, it felt like the thread was distorted. It was unusually stiff. Those screws out. I think someone's re-greased that at some stage. Yes, that grease runs far too freely for a uh, camera as old and as particularly one as old and filthy as this one is. Let's see if we can get the screws out of the that hold the front standard and everything in. Clean that screw because it's exceptionally gummy. Oh. That one doesn't want to come out. Tools, tools, something, something with a bit of thump to it. This will do nicely. Yep. 
who is the other priest. Can't find it. All right. Hang on to your chair. I'm just about to thump this, and the table will doubtless bounce too. Here we go. Well, that's got half the beach in it. Yuck. This is an early example. There's no return spring on this piece. Later cameras have a return spring built in here. There were quite a few changes made to this mechanism over time. Uh, springs fitted, springs removed, and then put back again. That will certainly need to be cleaned up very well and to be running freely enough to work as it originally should have worked. So one screw here that holds the bracket for the retainer, for the transfer shaft here, which is very grimy and covered in grease and dirt. And that's the body shell empty. Now I'll have to turn my attention to cleaning this up. The first thing I need to do is strip all this black paint around the body edges that shouldn't have been there and uh, if it had been in a decent state I'd leave it. But since it's ugly and I don't intend to touch the black paint up I might as well remove it back to as it should have been. It's very dirty. Okay, well I've um, been working away steadily on this Retina 3C and I've got it, the body to a good state now. You can see I've removed the black paint that had been daubed around the body edges and I've cleaned the alloy back so it's nice and bright. I found a piece of reclaimed leatherette and uh, fitted that to the base of the camera. Fitted a, or had to replace the advanced lever. That was that was buggered. Um, the leatherettes, apart from that, I have cleaned them. I've rubbed a bit of wax into them. They're quite patchy looking, but uh, to be honest, that's that's as good as you can get with those. They're not in a good state. The leatherette that had been on the bottom, I think it had been stuck there with epoxy. It, uh, there was no danger it was going to come off. I've just roughly set the position of the focus helical. Of course the position there was obviously incorrect. Uh, there was no point scribing it and putting it back where it came from. I noticed that there were clearly scrape marks in here where the screw heads had moved. Um, I have shifted those, the position of this to the other end of the scrape mark and uh, that may possibly be roughly the correct position but I can deal with that when I go to set to adjust the focus and, and so forth. The front housing I don't think you can get to see that. I'll see if I can get the light right on that. Yeah, you might be able to just about see that. It's not in stunning shape. Let's see if I can. It's been thumped in at the front. I had to replace this glass that was broken on the top of the meter underneath the top cover. The cover glass on the meter was broken. The little frame 
piece on the front of the rangefinder. There's a little piece of like celluloid there with the frame lines marked on it. I thought that had a greasy fingerprint or something. It wasn't oil. It was obviously glue of some sort, most likely the same epoxy that had been used on the base. I couldn't get that clean. I had to replace that. The spacer under the rewind knob was missing, so I've had to replace that. I've replaced the odd screw from here, and I've replaced the screw here. Of course, I had to replace the plate that was missing under here completely, and it's uh, remaining two screws. One of them, of course, had been transferred to the top. The cocking rack was absolutely rubbish. It was chewed up in two places. Um, someone went out of their way to bugger that up. What else have I done to it? That's probably the bulk of it. I'm going to work on the shutter next. I've already noticed that the shutter's got a little problem. Let's bring this in. Zoom you in a bit. Now the curve, first the shutter release lever here is obviously bent. No idea what happened to that. I did notice that the arm in the camera, the, the finger that presses on that, that was slightly bent too. No accounting for what people will do. The curved rack here is jammed. It's been pressed, it's been forced round as far as it'll possibly go in the cocked position. It cannot move any further, it's physically blocked from moving further. I would say that uh, probably the shutter or the cocking rack, possibly the timing had been lost. Somebody put it back and then wound on the film advance as hard as they could and have managed to completely stuff the cocking rack and they've jammed this curved rack but that'll probably free up I would imagine once I disassemble it. Looking at the shutter it's uniformly filthy in there. The front lens comp component is very hazy. I can see haze on just about every surface. The rear I can see filth on the inside. Um, some unusual little green patch of something. I've got no idea what that is. So my next task is to disassemble the shutter and see if I can do anything with it. The uh, front lens component is extremely stiff, doesn't want to clip into position. Got no idea what's going on there yet. Something's bent obviously or damaged. I mentioned earlier that the locking screw here is missing. Lift off the speed cam. The timing here is correct at this side, it's okay. Lift off the main drive ring. That curved rack, I said it was at the extreme of the cocked position, it's actually at the extreme of the other end of the range. The teeth look a little bit suspect. I'll cock the shutter manually, see if it'll fire. 
Yeah. Yes, it does. All right. All right, I'll strap it down and see what I can do with it. Okay, well, I've finished with this camera now. It um, all appears to be working correctly. It's taken a bit of work, but uh, the results are pretty good. Certainly as tidy as I can make this thing without replacing the entire camera. So the body, I'd pretty much gone into all the details of the body and what I discovered that was wrong, what I'd replaced, what I'd fixed. That brings us back to the shutter. Now the shutter, the shutter was interesting. Um, I'd previously mentioned it was missing the lock screws. Um, I don't have a replacement lock screw for that. I've run out now. I've locked that uh, retainer ring in with a bit of lacquer. That won't be going anywhere. Inside the shutter. Well, the, the shutter was basically dirty, needed servicing. The diaphragm blades in particular were quite sticky. Shutter blades weren't much better. I polished the shutter blades with Brasso. They were, um, the surface on them wasn't wasn't great, they weren't running as smoothly as they should. After that it was fine. What else? Oh yes, the shutter. I, I mentioned that the curved rack was right round at the end of its travel and jammed there. Well, the rack itself looked a little bit rough. It's um, the surface isn't stunning. It would probably work okay. The curved pusher piece that it pushes round inside the outer case is quite damaged at the end there. I'll zoom in a bit. Right there, you can see marks across there. And I imagine, I imagine it's been jammed underneath that gear at some stage. I'm not sure how you'd achieve that. That takes us back to here, the case. This is the outer case. Now there's not a hell of a lot that can go wrong with the outer case typically. But this one, I noticed, certainly did have a problem. There it is. It's got a sharp dent in it right here, which transfers right through to the inside there, and that would have had the effect of jamming, jamming this piece and stopping it from running smoothly. I'm buggered if I know how you could go about achieving something like that. The only way I can see of easily doing it would be to drop the shutter, take the camera out of the, the shutter out of the camera, and then drop it onto something. Um, I just honestly don't know how you'd get to that to damage it apart from that. It's it'd be right up the side here. You know, if you got in there with a pin punch, you could probably do it, but right up here somewhere. I'll zoom out. That's a bit not focusing very well. Be right up here in the case. So, we have quite a large component count for this camera. Um, I said I'd replace the film advance lever. Now the film advance lever, there's normally not a hell of a lot can go wrong with these. It's not uncommon for them, for them to be blown out at the back edge here. Like this one, as you can see, it's cracked there, and that's from the camera having been dropped and the advance lever having hit the ground. So this one shows the expected scar at this end. But for some bizarre reason, someone has cut it out. 
at the other end of that piece of metal. And uh, you can tell that they've cut it out because they've left the scars here from whatever file or tool they were using to cut that away. So this would have the effect of mean that the arm would fold back closer to the body. And uh, I'm blown if I know why you'd need to do that. However, that's what someone has done. So this arm shows accidental damage, but here that's purposeful damage. Someone went out of their way to create that for who only knows what reason. I mentioned that the spacer under the rewind knob was missing and I've had to replace it with one like this. This is actually out of a, a later camera, probably a reflex S or similar, and they're not quite the same. They are thicker in their top section, so I've had to machine one down to fit this one because I just don't have any. There was that front mask, front mask for the viewfinder. I was un wasn't able to get the finish off that. That looks like glue to me. It looks like someone spread glue on it. That was the piece of rangefinder lens, glass, but the corner was broken off, it's too badly broken to reuse. The cocking rack as I said is buggered, um, I'm fairly confident that that was probably down to abuse rather than anything else. Interestingly, the gear from the top of the film advance lever here is not the correct one for this model. It should have had a slight collar raised section here and it hasn't got it. That raised section may have helped keep it centred, I'm not sure whether it would or not. But it certainly something contributed to the failure of that cocking rack. Um, I'm not sure that that could actually shift off centre to any noticeable, noticeable extent but it's certainly not the right part for the camera. The cocking rack is just buggered. Um, it's probably the original. I can see it's brass underneath that nickel plating. It has two areas of very bad damage here and here. It's not, not stunning at the end here either. In between the teeth are almost doable. The teeth at the bottom they're not stunning, but they would certainly work. So the cocking rack was certainly a point of failure. Um, not the only one. The camera had multiple faults. But at least that certainly would have stopped it from working. So this camera, this camera can go back to its owner now. Uh, I hope he doesn't send many more like it. Really, the camera was right at the bottom end. I mean, I have, I'm i not one for scrapping cameras and use, taking repairable cameras away and stripping them for parts. But I have to say, I've dismantled better cameras than this to be used as parts. This was just, just ugly. Ugly and mechanically bad too, so the combination is not good. So having said that, if you're buying a camera and it doesn't actually work, I would tend to leave the thing alone unless it's pretty. A pretty camera that doesn't work is always a viable proposition to repair. An ugly camera that doesn't work is, is getting very questionable. The component count in putting this thing back together was fairly high. Particularly things like that leatherette. That's a leatherette that I've recovered from something else. They're extremely hard to... Uh, I don't have many of those. That might have been the only one I had left. So if the cameras look very, very ugly, 
and they don't work they're probably parts cameras really I hate to think what the person paid for this wonderful thing when they bought it I'm scared to ask them thanks for watching